Just a quick update on a few things I've been doing in my camper, because you were curious. First of all, big old 52 inch light bar on the front here, which is working really, really well. Um, it does something nice, which is that uh, the uh, light from that does not um, show up on the hood at all, which is sometimes blinding when uh, when lights are mounted here over the over the windshield. It's kind of a strong reflection off the hood, but here the hood is in the shadow from the top of the windshield, which is great. But then that shadow where it hits the ground, I can't actually see it as uh, the angle is just right that uh, uh, you don't really see that from the driver's seat. So it's kind of a nice combination of like nice high light, a lot of scatter off to the sides, good angle of illumination, um, but no reflection and no you know sharp shadow line from the, from the front of the truck which is great. So when you want a highlight, um, that one seems like it's gonna do the job just fine. It's really easy to mount. Um, as far as the interior build out, so these are a couple of one by 12 boards uh, with some utility carpet over it for basically dog beds go there, dogs sleep there, and while driving um, the cargo net holds uh, pillows and duffel bags and maybe my, some of my telescope equipment that the, we uh, move around once we reach camp. Um, here there's some styrofoam insulation against this, uh, the front bulkhead. So that holds some heat in and particularly helps the dogs that are right next to that. That thing would be real cold otherwise. And then I made up some small brackets to attach things that go into this accessory rail that's all over the alley cab. This is just coroplast covering over the styrofoam to protect it. And I had a couple of these panels, Molly panels, that I think they're intended to go on the back of uh, front seats in a vehicle and tie on with these strings. But here I just zip tied them in place and can attach all kinds of little Molly bags to hold this or that, like a hammock and uh, zip ties and various bungee cords and tape and uh, random all the, all the toilet stuff lives over on that side. I'm probably going to get a couple more of these to hang there. Um, so yeah, cargo net here just keeps the lightweight stuff that, I, that we keep up here while driving from shifting around pillows and blankets and things like that. Um, let me come around the other side. Uh, these are little strips of glow-in-the-dark tape held on with uh, VHB. Um, so at night, when it's super, super dark, uh, I have a tendency to want to hit my head on this um, because it's dark sky, totally blacked out everything in here. And uh, when you have a headlamp on or a hat or something, it's a little too easy to miss that those corners are there. So that glow-in-the-dark tape should help. It's on all all four of those corners. Um, so yeah, a couple of tools up here, room for more, and uh, camp toilet stuff lives here, hand sani, TP. Just, these things are great to keep. Uh, Sharpie pen, which always comes in handy. Um, all right, let's open up the back. So I put a lot of work into this door. This is all custom, but styrofoam fitted here to add a little insulation. There are a lot of places that are not insulated, like in here, and I'll get to those eventually as I continue doing work, organizing them. Um, electrical junction boxes there, solar. Uh, it's just a bungee with a bunch of carabiners on it to hold random things, keep them from flying around. Um, this is a 15 gallon fuel tank from Titan Fuel Tanks Sidekick. And so we got diesel in there, it's strapped down, super secure, pretty much stays out of the way. Uh, there's even a little storage space here underneath and held in with a kind of custom bracket up there and down to the bed here and a bracket to one of the side rails there, grounding strap. And the way you fill the tank is just with a siphon hose, a shaker siphon, you just drop it in there shake it up and down and the fuel starts flowing. It's not, not too fast. It takes 10 or 15 minutes. It's 
transfer all 15 gallons. Um, got some organization here. These are just Velcroed on in place. These are super cheap on Amazon. Um, but for um, Kleenex and just random small things, those work really nice. Um, anyway, back to the door and the styrofoam. So the next stage, I am have access to a laser cutter at work that I'm going to basically do this whole thing in six millimeter plywood with uh, molly straps and attach a number of kind of tall, thin uh, pouches here to hold jet boil and a water bottle and utensils and all the all the cooking stuff um, should all live on here, which means this clear crate that has all our kitchen stuff, we can get rid of that. And it will all just be here where we do the cooking anyway. Um, yeah, this aluminum pull handle uh, was here on this back door, um, but it interferes with my stove. When I set it up on this table, the stove is just a bit too tall for that, so I moved it up here where it's actually handy. When the, uh, when the tent is all the way up, it's nice to have a grab handle here getting in and out quickly um, at night where you're never quite sure where your feet are. It's the, this is a little narrow, so sometimes I miss that at night. It's nice to have a grab handle here. Uh, just for a little extra. Um, all right, so anyway, replaced the aluminum grab handle with a, a couple of uh, swiveling brackets and a piece of uh, webbing. So this is all constructed at the pie shops. Um, falls down like that. I'm just on paracord, which I'm gonna replace with a uh, metal crimped uh, wires, cables. So yeah, aluminum diamond plate and a nice sturdy hinge. And then this whole thing is constructed out of aluminum U-channel um, with uh, nylon spacers covering the, sh the threads. And this is uh, UHMW plastic cutting board material. It slides out to the side for a little extra uh, work surface. I'll probably add a, another um, metal line from here to, to here to support this, make it a little less, just a little less bouncy, but for the time being, it's good enough for just uh, keeping small stuff and doing some cutting. Um, yeah, it was fun to build my own here. I've seen some pre-made products you can just bolt onto the alley cab, but they're mostly just the same as what goes on the back door of a Wrangler which means they're way too small for the alley cab door. Um, or if it's something pre-made for the alley cab, what I've seen is they're just real expensive, three, four, five hundred bucks, I don't know. Um, it was kind of fun to build this myself. Um, so there's that, yeah. Basic configuration is, yeah, fuel tank, lots of storage under here. Uh, right now it's not really packed for traveling, but uh, the traction boards sit all the way up at the top here when there's more stuff underneath here. And then uh, cooler is just a uh, carabiner in in the corners and that is holding holding that in place really nicely. Also easy to remove and pull it out to, you know, fill it, drain it, wash it, um, or have it out in the camp. Um, but that stays in place, easy to move out when needed. Um, it's a thermometer stuck there with the probe inside. The traction boards currently have been living there, but what I want to do is repurpose this. There's this empty space on the Gladiator in here. It's just a gap between the back window and the front bulkhead of the camper. Um, and these cover panels are just cosmetic and they're bolted in place, but I want to remove all those bolts and put a hinge over this entire edge with a little latch on the inside. So this will open up, traction boards can slide into a, a bracket that'll hold them in there so that when they're muddy or snowy or dirty, they just live on the outside. They don't have to go into the living space. Um, so that's to do in the future. Um, anyway, that's where it is now.